the one road. Okay. Okay. Now well, Force Nine will do it. That's fine. Okay, so Force Nine, get on the road, right where I am. Roger. Okay, now Ghost, I want you to get on the road over. I'm. I want you to come over where I am. Let's just say this is the engagement distance right here. I want you right here, Ghost. Right on top of me. Okay. Now here is where a TD should be in comparison to hit force 9. Here. That's it. That's a good 100 meters further. If you can go even further than that, then that's great. But typically you're going to want to stay uh, around 250 me meters. So you're actually going to want to go 40 meters back further than this. Because most tanks can't spot past 250 meters with their with bushes there. So you're going to want to bush from about this distance from Force 9. And you're going to want to follow a main group from about 100 meters. Explain to them why, because they're going to be... A thinking that they can't see the target at all so you're gonna have to tell them why that you're st so far behind the first line S line of your own tanks yes this is why when you're this far back you may not personally be able to spot them but your teammates will so from this distance I've got ghost spotting force nine let's say I normally wouldn't be able to see him but since he sees him I can see him because he's got a radio and his radio bounces off of mine, and it makes it oh, so yeah. that I can see what he's seeing. So that can makes his view range of, yeah, what's up? All right, guys, even though you're down there with him, it's actually a better perspective of what's going on if you come back up here with me. Listen carefully to what he just said, and if you're confused, say something. This is why you don't just go and bypass a module. When AOD gets into a skirmish or is challenged by another team, you want to make sure that you have everything you possibly can for your most favorite tank that is eligible to be in that match. So right now we've got the 560 matches coming up, so you have to pick a five type tank of your choice that you feel comfortable with, and you're going to have to max it out. And that radio is going to be a key uh, play in maxing out that tank buy the best radio you possibly can because this is what it's for right here if you're a TD to the rear having a good commander and a good radio you're gonna see everything your front echelon sees and that's your job is to support the main battle tanks MBTs yes you're exactly right in what you're saying the radio is a very important part of the tank just for that fact that you could be further back from your teammates and then you could you normally wouldn't be able to see that far but since your teammates can see him you can hit from a distance and that's what makes you successful as a tank destroyer it keeps you out of harm's way and uh, prevents you from being spotted which protects you from artillery and other tanks that would go after you just this small detail right here question Go for it. Aiming reticle to stick with the circle or what? Um, well, I use mostly default. It, it really, the default stuff's pretty nice, but you could, if you can stand the crosshairs, the target crosshairs, they're probably better. I just don't like them because how they look. <laughs> One of them's like. I'm sorry, I lost the, part of you with the dings and bongs. Red. I like the default stuff because the first one that you have, it shows armor values on the tank. You use that little cursor that turns from green to red to yellow. Green means you'll penetrate, yellow means you might, and red means you won't penetrate if you hit there. Which is very okay. useful when you're hitting a tank. Because you'll be able to see right away, oh, I'm not going to penetrate there, I better shoot somewhere else. Or, I'm not going to be able to penetrate anywhere on that tank, so my next shot better be HG. Okay, then my default's not that because I just have the round circle and most I'm showing is 250 meters. No, I mean the part that you use to aim for your shots. When you go over another tank, it'll show a color, green, red, or yellow. That is armor values right there. Yellow means you will not penetrate. Red means you absolutely won't penetrate. You won't do any damage. It will bounce. Yellow means there's a small chance. 
So the yellow, you don't want to go there, even if you think you can. With HE, typically, if you hit a yellow, it'll still go through and do the damage. Uh, to be Reed honest, if it's only... AP, it'll bounce. Read Eyeless. Read Eyeless Camper. Did that answer your question? We can always do another room. Kind of, because it's kind of like I got you lit up and you're showing red. It highlighted, okay? But my aiming reticle is green. That means you could penetrate my armor from where you are with that, uh, with whatever you're about to shoot, whether it be HE or AP. Green is the ideal target cursor color that you want to hit an enemy tank with. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying on that. It's all about yes. enemy armor, and it's a very useful tool to have. I'm the question of the TDs. I keep hitting the you mind if I take a shot? Just to show the point? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm Seabus. Hit me. Um, uh, I, I oh, okay. didn't understand um, very well uh, what you say about the radio. O sea, I, I understand uh, the basic, but I would like to hear it again, if you don't mind. Could I pass yes, that one okay. on from the red storm? Um, well, let me do it. Uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. Radio. Uh, you're in You're in our training room, right? Yeah, you're in our training room. Okay, so you s everybody yeah. who's not involved in this, go back on the hill. So, the only people who should be down here are me, Force 9, and Ghost. Up here with me, everybody. Look for me. Come up here with me. One at a time, you'll go down there, and he'll show you what he means. This is the thing that maybe some people didn't get. Ghost... Pretend that Ghost is on the same team as Red Storm. He's not on my team. I am all by myself right here. Should we put someone on the same team down there instead? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Ghost, go back up, and I need a volunteer tank to stir down there. I got it. Take his exact position. Alright, while he's doing that, let me explain or try to explain verbally what we're talking about. When you buy a tank, are you upgrade and grind hard to a new level of tank? That tank only comes with the basic, what we call stock. That tank's not going to give you anything else. You're going to have to go and work for it. Each one of those module sections, like a new barrel, a new suspension. Radio is also one of those options. The radio is a very key, critical part of the tank even if you don't think so and you're about to see why a lot of you may not have uh, understood until now so we're going to show you why you need the best radio in your tank yes the radio once again it bounces off of a friendly tank and it works in a way where even if you're all in a line the radio signal will bounce off from one tank to the n to the next to the next to the next giving you the signal from the other side of the map and that'll let you see enemy tanks that are really far away from you that you would never have been able to see by yourself which is why you need that radio so that you could see your enemy targets way before they can see you and you could take shots at them from here like where I am like uh, I so understand. my signal is bouncing off of Sigma Rho and he has Force 9 spotted, so the return signal bounces off him and comes back to me, which means, in turn, I'm out of Force 9's view range. Since he cannot see me, then I can, I'm can i free to fire, and he will not spot me when I fire, which will make me essentially I invisible. Perfectly. All right, good. Um, yeah, and I just, I just want to point out, too, Right now, I can see Red Storm, but it's only be because it's only because Ghost is uh, pretty darn close to him. I can't even it's see. It's because all right of now. you guys are over there. You guys are all within yeah, 150. Essentially, 300 uh, to 250 right meters now. is the golden distance for tank destroyers. It's not too far away to not hit, and it's not too close to be revealed. So you want to try and well, stick to within 250 to 300 meters of your target. I couldn't see. I couldn't see Sigma until right here. All right, Force Nine, you back guys, up, uh, please. The the you guys can tell the distance. I'm not sure if all of you have noticed. There's a little thing above your reticule that shows distance when you go over an enemy target or an allied target. It'll show how many d meters away they are from you. 
So it's in black letters. Mine at least has it. I'm on default reticules. I don't know if the other ones do or don't. I haven't experimented with those, but you're going to want to try and stick between 250 and 350 meters. That's the golden. That's the best place you could possibly be away from your target. The gents, look down at your little map to the right-hand corner. You'll notice that one of our guys in green is at D1. The second one is at F1, and our target is at H1. The TD all the way back in D1 now has that target with that, that target even having a clue that he's there. That's the advantage that you get of doing this and what we're showing you. Yes, it's a prime example. We're firing from four sectors away and we're hitting the target like this. And he, Classy. if you guys were not up there, would have no clue that I just shot at him or where I came from. Right. By Somebody guys, tell me this. My teammates, yeah. The gentleman in H1, who's the red dot, is now going to look for fire. Where do you think he's going to think the fire just came from? Somebody wanted to tell me? Bird metal pass that one on, usually held. Right. He can he's going to think F1 shot. is the target that just shot at him. But what he doesn't realize is there's actually two guns pointing down his throat. So while he tries to fire his first shot, which has got a 40% chance of missing and deflection to it, because F1 did not fire yet, he returns fire to him, we can fire right back at him again, and we now have four shots to his one miss. Does that make sense? Yeah, affirmative. Yeah, and that's why that spot that right. that's pointed out in the beginning is no good. Because you're the frontline tank there, and that's a bad thing with the tank destroyer. That's there why are we a few exceptions right to this there, rule, though. Keep in mind, the Yog Tiger and the Ferdinand have zero camouflage, basically. It's broken. The, the developers uh, need they need to fix it. There's something wrong with Ferdinand camouflage and the Yog Tiger camouflage. Those two tanks, they don't cloak very well. So they're frontline tanks, especially with the amount of armor they have. Frontline tanks being, that being said, it, it doesn't mean they can't be at that range. Because the other tank, they're going to have a tough time hitting you from there anyway. But just keep in mind, the Ferdinand and the Yog Tiger, these rules don't really apply as well. Camo nets actually give them negative values right now. So if you ever get one of them, do not put a camo net on it. I got a question for you. Yeah, what's your question? Something I've been hearing. I've been hearing that camo netting gives a negative value to everyone. Is it only those two tanks, or is it everyone? It's just those two tanks. We've tested it See, on most of the other tank destroyers. Those are the only two that it gave negative values to. What about heavy tanks? I've, we didn't test it on heavy tanks. I'd imagine if it's a game mechanic that's wrong with the Ferdy and the uh, Dog Tiger, then it's probably only those two tanks because they're not operating the way they're supposed to be. Well, yeah. I, isn't the uh, Jad Panther similar in that regard? No, the Yog Panther is unaffected. It actually gets positive values from Kamonets. We tested that too. It's just the Ferdinand and the Yag Tiger, and people have actually isolated the code that's fucking it up. Yeah, the guy got banned because he violated the code of conduct <laughs> looking at the code. So, don't go out and do it. Question. All right, here's another thing, gents. Now, this is going to confuse you, but it needs to be said, if you guys don't mind me saying it. Uh, let me hear his question first, real quick. Okay, um, I I um, assume that what you are saying about uh, the TDs and the radio, it al also applies to the other tanks. That's correct, right? Yes, it does, as a matter of fact. It, it is completely effective on the other tanks as well. It's just tank destroyers, it works um, especially well because they can have good high damage guns, high penetration guns that penetrate from a long distance, while the other tanks, they really aren't designed to be further away and they're less accurate at this distance. Tank destroyers, if you can imagine, snipers and let's say snipers in a shooter and then uh, guys with assault rifles and COD or something. The guys with the assault rifles are always on the front line, right? They're up there shooting those guys directly. They aren't going to want to be as far away or 
you know, they, they do want to, you can be at a medium distance with them, but if you go too far away, you aren't going to hit anything. A sniper works the complete opposite. If you're too close, you're not going to be able to hit anything, but this doesn't apply with tank destroyers in that sense, but the distance makes it s perform so much better, the sniper rifle, and the same thing applies with the tank destroyer in the way that it's undetected. Just think of it like that. Think of your tank destroyer like a sniper, and then the other tanks is not really as much of a sniper, unless you've got a really good gun on it. There are some tanks that could do it. I've seen it done, but it's diff more uh, difficult. I've, would that I've be got a quick the, question. Would that yes. be the German uh, tank line, or heavy tank line with the uh, pan or with the Tigers? Man. I can't go into specifics with that. All right, I'm gonna start I've the next battle, H and we'll, we'll go over um, we'll go over positioning. Some good spots that you guys can use, especially when you're on the defensive. I've got a quick question on uh, penetration. All right. Um, there's a, when you look at penetration and damage on your uh, garage overview. Uh, there's three numbers. Uh, what exactly do those three numbers represent? Okay, listen closely. It's in this order. If you do not change your service setting in your garage, it will be listed as AP rounds, APCR, which are your gold rounds, and then high explosive, which are your uh, high explosive shots. And they'll be listed in that order on the gun. I got another question. Hot keys one, two, and three. All right, Slide save the default. questions for the end now. I want to show you some good spots for tank destroyers. So, side one, hurry up and regroup. We're going to stay in the base on this one. I'm going to start over here. Uh, by the meantime, I would like to ask about um, the numbers. I saw some numbers uh, separated by a dash. Um, for example, I don't remember exactly when, okay. when it... I'm going to stop you because I know what you're talking about. Underneath, okay. or when you go to gun characteristics, it shows uh, damage. It shows like, uh, let's say, 100 to 200. That is the amount of damage that your gun is capable of doing, the most or the least. And that damage will be averaged out, and that's what will be displayed when you look at your gun. But if you look at the characteristics, you're right, it has that dash. The average is just I in between the two. I also... Uh, so that uh, dash in the loading time. Yeah, it's the wait. You saw it in loading time. Yes, there's been a couple of guns, uh, such yes. as the gun with the uh, Russian T-34, can fire 20 to 30 exactly. rounds a minute. 